$5 Games presents Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game. Kinda love that we're making it clear that this is the game version by adding the words THE GAME to the title. Too bad the director of the movie didn't have that same gumption. I'm going to bring you on a story. Many years ago, I always looked forward to going to the dentist. That was because at the dentist office, they had a Super Nintendo with a fighting game about humanoid turtles with masks. My first beat em up game. I'd mash buttons like a kid who drank his parents' coffee and pray that I'd win. But there simply wasn't enough time. So I poisoned my siblings' teeth with Halloween candy so that they'd get cavities and let me play the game longer. Still didn't happen, but it did install an interest in me for that genre of game. Whenever I saw an arcade machine, I would just stare and stare at the preview playing over and over again, festering an inhumane desire. This game brings me back to those times, with an art style that is a tier above those games in some ways. The gameplay, however, is not. It's too reminiscent of those games, down to their frustration. Unrecognizable openings, unreactable attacks, unreasonable relationships, unrealistic body movement. The Steam version of the game has poor reviews. Most of them are because in order to play the game, you have to install Ubisoft Connect and create an account and sign in? All right, whatever. So anyways, if we remove all of those reviews, most of them are positive. Even if you read those negative reviews, they're actually mostly positive and they just put a negative review because of that detail. The game nails the feeling of mashing buttons until you get carpal tunnel and have to cry yourself to sleep at night. So I highly recommend not knocking this game out in one sitting unless your fingers are made of steel. Enemies drop money for you to spend in several shops in the game. However, there's no indication what each item does until you buy it. And even then, what exactly does plus one guts do? Also, why are there lives? And more importantly, why does the game not replenish them when I start a new level? If I'm on my last life when I beat a boss, there is no reason not to just get a game over immediately in the next level so I'm back at three lives. Back in the 80s and 90s, I'd let this slide, but by 2010, this shouldn't have been a thing anymore. When I started that game, I saw the stream remote play icon in the corner. That means that you can play with somebody across the web even if they don't own the game. You should still be able to do it. I'm unsure with the Ubisoft Connect stuff. I don't think it'll interfere though. The story is about a guy who beats up everyone he comes across while he hunts down his girlfriend's ex-boyfriends. I'd probably understand what was going on if I actually saw the movie or read the comics, but I didn't. Did she like promise him a kiss for beating up every guy she ever dated? Like his two friends are just sitting there looking miserable. Why are they here? What if I selected one of his friends to beat up the ex-boyfriend instead of him? Would they get the kiss instead? Anyways, the charm in the game and extracurricular movements are the best parts for me. Subscribe, I do five of these a week. Like and comment if you want. That's a wrap for this game. Consider picking this game up instead of the Blu-ray version. It's a quarter of the price.